Welcome to level seven. Sorry, that corner was really dark. And I so with WandaVision coming on to Disney Plus on January 15, I think, I decided to do sort of two ranking videos from Marvel TV shows. Now, I'm not doing every one. I'm only doing the two notable ones, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is semi-connected now with the whole time travel stuff, and the Marvel Netflix shows. I know there's Cloak and Dagger and the Runaways, but I haven't personally watched those yet, and those two are connected, but they may be connected to some. I don't know. I might do the other Marvel TV shows, but as far as right now, the two notable ones are, again, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Marvel Netflix. So I'm going to start off with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ranking all seven seasons of it. At number seven is season one. Hello. Thank you for assembling today here at AMC Theaters. I'm Agent Phil Coulson from the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. The first one. It's not a bad season upon like thinking about it. And I regret that I haven't seen the first like three seasons in a while. So I'm going based off of memory, which is awesome. Always great. I have a great memory. But the first half is really rough to get through. Like we, you know, Nick Fury, which is cool. We get to see him in like two episodes. It's all right. And this is when it was still closely connected to the MCU. And now it's like kind of far and beyond. But like it's cool seeing Clark Ruby come back. They introduce great side characters like Sky and oh god, I'm forgetting other characters' names. Agent May. All great. And then that big twist ward of being part of Hydra after the whole uh, Winter Soldier twist. which is awesome and then he starts becoming the villain and it's all good like, it's funny it's fun it's entertaining not amazing though and i can get if people see this as like the worst season or even bad i don't think it's that bad but sadly it's just okay it's nothing special about it which is why i was intrigued because okay this is gonna be something way different from the mcu but it's also gonna be connected and it wasn't just more generic superhero stuff all right so season one is at number seven number six is season six. Oh, so good to see you <laughs> okay this is definitely a dip down in quality from the previous four seasons. Now, this is around the time where they didn't know if they were going to get renewed or not for a sixth season or seventh season. So they just split it into like 13 episode arcs in season six and season seven. And it kind of shows here where they didn't, it's not they didn't know what the hell they're doing. They're just like, right, let's do whatever we want. And we got more comedic like episodes, more a more funner tone for season six, which I liked. Some of it didn't hit with me in terms of the comedy, but it was still fun. This is still a good season. After the events of the fifth season, there's like two groups now. And it's like, okay, sure. It's just more, more of what we got. I should have been in season five, but hey, whatever, right? It's still good. The newer cast or not cast, but new characters are introduced. Don't really care about them. That's kind of the issue. I'm like forgetting. I'm, I'm having a hard time saying what it is. I'm saying about season six. I haven't seen people say anything yet. So I'm forgetting a lot of it, and it's just forgettable. Season six just it, it just doesn't do it for me, sadly. So still a good season, but definitely like ah oh, shit, we don't have really anything left to do. So set number six. Number five is season seven. <laughs> Please come wake me up this time, okay? A relatively good end, Coulson as a character and the other characters, goes and getting his baby back or I forgot what the hell's name. I call it baby because it's supernatural, but he gets to drive off into the sunset or into the camera frame with it, which is awesome. Before that, we get the team finding a life model of a decoy Coulson. Oh yeah, okay, so this is the, the other version of Coulson where like there's another version of Coulson. You have to for him back into our normal Coulson, which probably the reason why he even exists is probably because of the Infinity War stuff. And again, it's like sometimes it is and sometimes it's not connected to the MCU. But yeah, stuff like that. So okay, sure, I get it. It's Coulson and the evil Coulson. The team have that reach out to this evil cousin and be like hey come with us you are this cousin and he they do we just get to him they start a relationship with sky and another guy which again in terms of when i watch a movie or tv show to me whenever there's a relationship ruling up it's just kind of like okay what is it going to add besides some happiness it like it's like i don't really want to see that you know but it is what it is that's fine as well our characters get our you know their ending which is good it, it's a constant good not this season seven and all the different like title openings like the title cards that was really fun it was really cool but yeah would it end off this series not the best way but a very good way to send off these characters very happily and making you know a uh, long time fans and dedicated fans very happy so number five is season seven number four is season five Here's the thing about season five. I, once again, am forgetting a lot about this season. Let me just look something up. Hold up. That's right. Okay, so the first half, I actually had to look that shit up. But anyways, in the first half, they have Kosa and the team going to the future in space, which is like, okay, this is cool. This is definitely a, like, the writers, they keep doing this is because they don't know what the MCU is going to do. They probably get, I don't know if they get told ahead of time. Or they probably don't because, like, they don't want to speak to each other probably. It's not even connected. Or Kevin Feige and the Marvel Studios don't consider it connected. But they basically kind of have to wait for the big events to happen. Be like, oh shit, well, with Infinity War happening, 
Anthony and Talos and, and Talbot, sorry, mentioned him in the last like episode. It's like, okay, this is before Infinity War Tramon, but during Infinity War Tramon. So the first stuff they basically have to make up some sort of elaborate thing to be like, okay, they need to, these characters to be out of our universe. They they have to go back, they travel into the future and see what happens in the future where Earth is gone and everyone's up in space, humans are living in space, and the, the universe is completely fucked basically. So they learn out what they learn what happened and what they meet the Krees and whatnot. And then the starting and second half, we get the 100th episode, which is great, which would have gotten to see Ghost Rider. But either way, we see that right, and then they try to convince everyone to be like, hey, in the present, you know, let's try to pre prevent this one. Uh, most people don't believe them because they sound crazy as fuck. They have Glenn Talbot back to have gravitational powers because they need someone to sort of, you know, sort of, I guess, gravitate his power. You know, he turns to be like the villain for the, the last section of the show, which is kind of sloppy on their part. I won't lie, it's kind of a bit sloppy. I will fully admit, but it's still awesome. We we know this character from the previous seasons. He just becomes this guy. Sure, I'll take it. His fight with uh, Sky was really, uh, honestly, really awesome. But then we get Kashi Coulson dies due to his interaction with Ghost Rider in season four, where he allowed Ghost Rider spoilers like season four to be inside of him. He burns out that little reactor thing that's inside his body, like that's keeping him alive. So he's on like he's basically buying his time. And by the end of the season, him and May go to Tahiti, you know, and on the beach, and it's like, yeah, he's gonna die. And the next season, you know, he returns not being him. A good way, sort of starting with Coulson, with him dying, him coming back, and then him dying again, would have made sense. It probably wouldn't have pissed off a lot of fans. But I mean, he to the rest of the Avengers, he's supposedly dead. So just make him believe that he actually is dead. I don't know. Just me though. Very good season. The, what, I think there's one plot point I wasn't a big fan of. What the hell was that? It's like it has to do with time travel stuff. I'm not forgetting. Either way, a very good season of the Agents of Shield. So uh, number four is season five. Number three is season two. I really like this season. Guy starts coming into her, her own character. She's not like the annoying, I guess, little bratty character that she was in season one, where she's just a girl. Do you know what she was doing? She's like TMZ, basically. A TMZ version of that. So that was very cool. Ward is back. He's being as evil as ever. I believe this season he has a thing with the one robot. Am I? Nope. Take that back. Take back what I just said. Forget it. This is the, this is the inhuman season. A lot of it just kind of blending together. Anyways, this is about the inhuman race where all the Kree are injecting their blood into a bunch of humans. And so the team has to deal with that while Coulson and Sky, they have like visions of building like this whole map thing i think the season where they're just like not drawing but like keen these things like why are they doing this we find out eventually why because of the humans the inhumans like sort of issue right there but then coaster becomes director of agents of shield cast of rebuilding and dealing with hydra yes ward is like the leader of hydra now his father or like his leader died we found out more backstory about him how he basically is a part of a hydra agent and whatnot and then there's a faction of anti-superhuman sh of shield agents by the way we find out that sky's mother is inhuman and her father has been hiding his secret i won't lie the father in this season was a bit over bearing i was like hey, why is he here why is he here? what what's what role will he serve he serves a big role because he knows about the secrets of the first half villain oh so this is also the start of like the whole full first half villain and second half i feel like every show that has 20 plus like episodes should do this or separate each arc in handful or, like there should be like three little mini arcs in each like they did with season four where there's like three main arcs in a one 22 episode season this season has two the first eight or nine episodes is about this you know nazi guys like okay that's kind of disappointing but it's still good they kill him turns out that guy causes a villain in the second half which is Sky's mother. She's just going around sucking souls out of humans because she despises them, any humans. More specifically, agents of shields and Nazis because they destroyed her village and her people when she was still inhuman because she looks very young. There's a reason why because she has this power, sucks souls out of people and so she wants to get revenge on that. But then she recruits other like kids that have inhuman ab like abilities. That guy who's blind who can like time travel I think. That's awesome. I forget his name but he's cool. She he meets her future boyfriend. What's that one blonde guy? Oh god. Come on, just show up a picture. Like and then she eventually go goes to like these inhuman in a camp or village she meets her mother and all these humans turns out there's something much more evil much more sinister about this mainly the mother she just hates despises humankind because what happened to her they almost literally killed her so that she had her father sky's father go and get people to you know heal herself which is pretty messed up and he's under the orders of the mother as well and then in the end sky has to choose between humanity and her family and she chooses humanity what i like about this season specifically is that she has to go out of her way to go against her family which is hard for her because she was a very lonely kid right this plays into like the first thing as well she's a very lonely kid feel like she have any parents she didn't have a family until she met her team shield and she is you know she considers them a family however she's you know conflicted her mother's evil her dad's kind of there as well it's like what do i do she goes against her family mainly her mother and uh, honestly sad mom and a good arc for sky she has to go against her family so pretty sad on that part but they erase father's memory so she can live a normal life so that's a good part on her so do you think this is a really good like they, these top three are like really good comic book and just television of, of all time in my opinion it's really good so number three is season two number two is season three 
more of a workout in season two but much better ward again he's a villain he's technically the villain but he has an arc he has miscellaneous things to do in season two and this season he is right in upper front of your face the first half is basically ward as a villain he kills colson's new girlfriend who again girlfriend thing don't care about but he kills her he's like you know what colson actually kills ward when he goes back into the white oh yeah the white columns were simmons right she gets stuck is it simmons or fitz fitz and simmons i'm so sorry this is a horrible ranking video hold on okay never mind i was right so simmons gets stuck in this other world with a bunch of creatures and whatnot she meets another guy she's stuck in there in this white cube they go inside there colson kills ward with his new arm because his hand got chopped off kills him by pressing his chest down in his heart which is very sinister take for Olsen he's willing to do that it's like okay this is this is cool this is interesting Hydra is in that other world goes inside Ward's body and Ward is a new version of Ward technically Hydra is a second half villain season 3 which is awesome this is like weird looking like creature where her ex-husband turns into this creature killing other humans while he himself is an inhuman because of the whole stone stuff that's awesome as well how Sky gets her powers she gets stuck in this stone I do like the whole fact that the whole point of Hitler or the Nazis saying hell Hydra is the fact that one of the Hydra agents finds out the whole point of this is to bring back this creature from the other world he is hydra that thing is hydra he's just kind of scared about okay this is what i've been sort of brought to believe to and allude to like that's really interesting and he's he fears him and then he should have because he dies for it and so that's really cool this whole time hell hydra what does it all mean weird your thing okay it's actually kind of cool i liked it i get it if you don't like it but i personally like it. i really like this this whole hydra thing i, I like that the reveal and all that what's it all about what it's what it all meant despite having may's like ex-husband creature thing he dies because of shenanigans bs stuff but it's always given that the hero is gonna win so they defeat ward hydra and in the end after defeating hive and hydra shield was made as a legitimate organization with once again signing with the soviet accords or sokovia Accords. number two is season three really good number one should be no surprise i think everyone considers it like the best season ever season four this season with ghost rider this season is amazing it is honestly i love this season first of all whoever show run this i don't know the showrunners but whoever was a showrunner at the time knew how to show on their show the first eight episodes are the ghost rider stories episodes 9 through 15 is the lmd and then the last chunk of episodes 16 through 32 is agents of hydras this is how you set up and structure a 20 plus episode season it is amazing so ghost rider himself the, everything about him the actor the look looks amazing they used him well and, and they used him enough so that he's not staying around way too long because ghost rider isn't op character and so when you have him around just kind of like you can do whatever he wants basically there's there's no threat level basically the threat level is down so they knew them the first eight episodes of being you know this just this guy who works on cars and he has a brother when he has to save his brother and turns out his uncle is like an evil guy so he has to kill his own family go after his own family kill his own family member and he goes into the laws of time travel dynamic stuff like after he defeats his father both him and his uh, father both him and his uncle get sucked up and they go somewhere else he doesn't return to last minute in the season but after that wraps up the amazing course that they look at everything the lm dean stuff this robot chick who fits in his instructor or teacher has been working on. I mean, throughout the season, we everyone kind of know. Okay, this is this AI robot is gonna be evil. Turned out to be true. She turns evil. She turns out to have a mind of her own, being like, "Hey, I wanna not only rule the world. It's kind of like, hey, I wanna rule the world. Kind of generic, which is well, I kind of the one big glaring negative of season four. But it's not just that. She actually has emotions for Fitz, and she doesn't impress him instead of like ruling world type stuff. Even though it kind of is the same. So after they get oh, the whole team control the one uh, goes into the start of season sixteen, the whole agents of Hydra stuff is awesome. As a called Todd Hard Todd card opening sequence we get to see war come back for one last time and all returning characters and whatnot it's amazing we also see uh, mac and all the other characters those are all cool characters as well the one lady who's like the flash and not the flash who was her name what's her goddamn name i cannot let this go hold on hold on i cannot oh it's yo-yo yeah yo-yo she's a cool character her abilities are cool she's not as fast as the flash because they limit her powers which is good on her part so that she doesn't feel op and yeah just season four ghost rider first eight episodes amazing he comes back in the last two episodes with the whole doctor strange ring stuff to get rid of the eight AI chick. Bam, that's amazing. Bringing him back. He's a fan favorite. He's awesome. The whole AI middle section part, somewhat lame, but still good. And then Ages of Hydra, amazing. Like the way the season was structured, the story, the narrative, the characters, everything about it is amazing. And season four of Agents of Shield is my favorite and my number one.
one so yeah that's it that's it for agents of shield next would be the marvel netflix shows but yeah this show for quite a while was i would consider one of the like the best superhero tv shows of all time and this still somewhat is true hopefully wandavision and fog and winter soldier they could be as good as this because they have money to do it the look of it feels like an mcu movie but just in tv form so hopefully you know they don't waste this time to be like yeah we're gonna tell filler hopefully it's not because it's like six to eight episodes i think i think that's like the limit so i'm also gonna say this new outro thing because it's like it just makes sense i have the impala sound and the whole theater and impala image so this has been the road so far and thank you for watching